Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. Spend, spend, spend. Mislead, mislead, mislead. It seems like that's the only thing we get from our politicians. What I find super interesting is that many politicians talk about spending and infrastructure and job creation. And by the way, in this video, I'll talk to you about trillions of dollars in spending that has actually gone to waste because the government watchdog simply cannot keep up and, and a very interesting manipulation of facts when we do a fact check with Biden administration officials who claim that there'll be 19 million new jobs created, whereas the reality is even without any of their proposals, 16.3 million jobs would have been created. Yep. So the new job creation is just 2.7. But guess what? They'll tell us that there are 19 million new jobs created. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Welcome to Ignition Time. Let's just jump right in. Let's start with this new reporting on your screen. Incredible reporting from the Washington Post. Dozens of America's biggest businesses paid no federal income taxes yet again. 55 corporations paid zero federal income taxes in 2020 including household names like Nike, FedEx and Dish Network. While individuals in travel, leisure, entertainment and hospitality lost their jobs permanently, while permanent unemployment was on the rise, some companies continued to make more money than ever before and didn't pay any federal income taxes. And while all that was happening, we are well over a year into the pandemic right now. Here's a headline of an article from the Washington Post. Also, a year after passage of the CARES Act, watchdogs struggle to oversee trillions of dollars in spending. Again, what's ironic is that one party wants to keep spending. The other party doesn't want to raise, uh, raise corporate taxes. So how are we going to find our way out of this gridlock? Well, I'm going to try and answer that question in this video. So make sure you watch this video all the way through to the end. Here's an interesting I would say shocking quote from the Washington Post article to date more than five trillion dollars in government spending has been appropriated to respond to the pandemic and ensuing economic calamity yet over the past year oversight from three separate watchdog entities has either been undermined by partisan disagreements meaning it hasn't happened because of politics slowed by bureaucracy in other words just normal normal nonsense going on with DC or constrained by funding think about this $5 trillion is set aside for spending and then the committees that are designed to watch over this spending because of politics, because of disagreements and because they themselves aren't funded are therefore not able to see the $5 trillion that was spent. This is as dumb as it gets. In fact, I would say this is an episode of the DC Comedy Hour. In fact, the Washington Post reports that one, one of the committees, one of the watchdogs created by the Chairs Act yet has to receive a chairperson hampering its work. Another watchdog faces budget constraints with just three dozen full time staff members so far. So think about this five trillion dollars for the whole country and one watchdog, one one entity, if you will, designed to watch the spending has 36 people designed to oversee all this. I would say that it's impossible for this watchdog to be effective and it is inevitable that there is trillions of dollars in waste. You know this, I know this, that a lot of money has been wasted because the government made sure it rained money for large corporations, but there was nobody to make sure that that money landed exactly where it was supposed to. And here's a tweet on your screen from Daniel Dale, who's a reporter for CNN, calling out, calling out what is misleading information from a Biden administration representative. Pretty, pretty incredible. Now check this out. Here's a tweet on your screen. Biden administration officials falsely said on television yesterday that Moody's estimated the infrastructure plan would create 19 million jobs. Moody's estimated that 19 million jobs would be added if the plan was passed. What the Biden administration official left out for us was that if the plan was not passed, 16.3 million jobs would be created. So the plan adds 2.7 million jobs, does not add 19 million jobs. So to take credit for 19 million jobs, when the plan only adds 2.7 million jobs is a misrepresentation and it is it is it is unfortunate that this is the way that certain biden administration officials are trying to position the benefits of the american jobs plan here's a related article on your screen on cnn and i'll quote from the cnn article white house national economic council director brian deese claimed on fox news on sunday that moody's estimated that the proposal would create 19 million jobs in addition the secretary of transportation pete Buttigieg use similar language when he was on TV on Sunday saying on ABC that an independent analysis found 
that this will lead to 19 million jobs and on NBC he said it's going to create 19 million jobs. This is misrepresentation and this is highly unfortunate emerging from the Biden administration for that matter any administration attempting to mislead the American people. Now what's interesting is President Biden said independent analysis shows that if we pass this plan the economy will create 19 million jobs. By the way that's a more accurate way to position this but it can be easily misrepresented. In fact, I'll quote from the CNN article, Biden's description of the 19 million statistic was more correct than the ones offered by Dees and Buridge. But, but Biden's language nevertheless invited listeners to come to an inaccurate understanding of what Moody's concluded. In the meantime, Pete Buridge continues to push for the American jobs plan. Here's the headline of an article on your screen from Politico. Now's our chance for an infrastructure plan. And he said, right now, we're still coasting off infrastructure choices that were made in the 1950s. He also said, now's our chance to make infrastructure choices for the future that are going to serve us well in the 2030s and into the middle of the century. In fact, why don't we listen to Pete Buttigieg and some of the things that he had to say. Remember, Pete Buttigieg along, along with the White House National Economic Council Director Brian Deese, as well as the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, among many other individuals, including the White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, are supporting President Biden in creating the public push for the American Jobs Plan, just like they did with the American Rescue Plan. Let's listen really quick to what Pete Buttigieg had to say about, about the American Jobs Plan as he crisscrosses various television networks along with other representatives from the Biden administration trying to make the case for the American Jobs Plan. Let's roll the tape and hear what Pete had to say. What we know is that that foundation has been crumbling, whether we talk about care infrastructure or whether we're talking about roads and bridges and the other things that I work on as the Secretary Secretary of Transportation. We have fallen to 13th in the world in terms of our transportation infrastructure and continuing to head in the wrong direction because we've been failing to invest for a generation. The American Jobs Plan is our chance to fix that. And I would note also that there's a lot of support for how the president is proposing to pay for this. That's part of why I think this is such a compelling package. We know that we as a country can afford to make big investments in, in infrastructure. We just need to make sure that corporations are paying their fair share. That's what this plan is going to do. Well, the president really believes in a bipartisan approach, and it's one of the reasons I'm constantly having conversations with members of Congress on both sides of the aisle uh, gathering ideas. But the president also has a clear vision. And as he said, this has to get done. Uh, he's asking for Congress to make major progress on this by Memorial Day. Uh, the bottom line is we've got to deliver for the American people, and we can't let politics slow this down to where it doesn't actually happen. Well, I'm not going to get ahead of the process in Congress. But what I will say is that the vision the president has put forward is fully paid for. Across 15 years, it would raise all of the revenue needed for these once-in-a-lifetime investments. So by year 16, you'd actually uh, see this package working to reduce the deficit. Uh, and again, it's important to point out that the American people agree with this because we've seen corporations paying zero. Uh, we're just asking corporations to pay their fair share at a rate, by the way, that would be lower than it's been for most of my life. Now, again, uh, if folks on the Hill have other ideas about how to pay for it, uh, we're, we're going to be interested to hear those ideas. But there is a clear vision yeah. to pay for this bill in full. It's, I was just going to say, it's not lost on me, though, that you say there's a vision to pay for this bill in full, in full. But if a bill that funds this infrastructure project comes to the president's desk and it does not include enough to pay for this bill and it's deficit spending, it doesn't sound like he would somehow veto it. I mean, is that what you're saying here? He's going to be open. If, well, that if Congress is, decides to deficit spend, so be it. That decision is very literally above my pay grade. And we'll see how this thing looks by the time it actually reaches the president, which we hope is quite soon. But what I'll say is uh, we've got a great proposal for how mm -hmm. we can do this that is responsible, that keeps the American economy mm -hmm. competitive. Uh, but if there are other ideas, now's a great time to hear them. No, because th those jobs numbers, which are good news, uh, still reflect, reflect an economy that's coming out of a, a deep hole created by the pandemic. But those are also numbers that are about this week, this month, this quarter. The American Jobs Plan is about a generational investment. It's going to create 19 million jobs. And we're talking about economic growth that's going to go on for years and years. So, yeah, the rescue plan was largely about just 
getting through this season, getting America back from the brink. But I want to be clear, the American Jobs Plan is not about short-term stimulus. It's about making sure that America is positioned to compete for the next decade and, and for the generation ahead. We know that China and our other strategic competitors uh, are already making major investments. It's time for America to lead the way again. And those 19 million jobs we're about to create uh, go way beyond some quarterly or monthly report. Uh, 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 Secretary Burajij, we know that's not true. This plan is not going to add 19 million new jobs. It's going to add a total of 2.7 million new jobs. So. So that, that is one thing that is not quite accurate. But let's get back. Let's get back to the secretary's comments. Absolutely. Yeah. By 2035, uh, America will be much more economically competitive. Uh, we'll be stronger in terms of leading the world because of the research and development investments that are here. Uh, and we will be on track to avoid climate disaster uh, because of the provisions for things like electric vehicles. And just as importantly, because we will have made these investments here starting in 2021, those electric vehicles that ever more and more people uh, around the world are driving will have been increasingly made in America by union workers. This is what you get for planning for the long term. I mean, look, right now we're still coasting off of infrastructure choices that were made in the 1950s. Now's our chance to make infrastructure choices for the future that are going to serve us well in the 2030s and on into the middle of the century when we will be judged for whether we met this moment here in the 2020. That's it, everyone. Let me know what you think of interesting comments from Pete Buttigieg about the American jobs plan, specifically, specifically his comments about this plan creating 19 million new jobs, which unfortunately is not accurate. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. I would really appreciate that. That helps out the YouTube algorithm. That allows us to bring you the news, to bring you important information pertaining to the country, the economy, as well as your money. For us at Ignition Time, it's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white, and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. We are all Americans first. I'm going to call out the administration, whether it's a Democratic administration or a Republican administration, because my goal is to bring the truth to the American people, wherever the truth might lead us. Thank you so much for watching. Please click the like button. Please subscribe. Please enable notifications. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.